Hello everyone, my name is AJ and today I'll be presenting on organizing a crypto native event and using MoneroCon as a case study. Today's talk will focus on three main aspects of organizing the event, specifically communication, coordination, and the methods of accepting crypto payment. Uh, before getting started, let me quickly just introduce myself. I am one of the organizers of MoneroCon and my crypto journey can be traced back to 2011. I was a huge fan of Second Life, which was a type of metaverse before metaverse be, was a thing. And I heard about Bitcoin. I looked into it. I downloaded the blockchain, but I had a really crappy laptop at the time and did not have enough space. So I ended up just deleting the software and forgetting about it. And I rediscovered Bitcoin in 2015 during the Greek financial crisis. And my interest in privacy eventually brought me to Monero in 2016. When it comes to communication, there are different platforms that could be used. For the first MoneroCon that we organized in Denver, Colorado, uh, we primarily used IRC uh, back in 2019. But after COVID, we noticed that there was a transition of people using uh, Matrix and Telegram to communicate. Uh, some people like Telegram because of the UI, uh, while others liked Matrix because of its uh, decentralized nature and the possibility of self-hosting a server. So there was a fragmentation in communication with people picking their own platform for communicating, which made it very difficult for organizing. So a solution that we ended up using was uh, Matterbridge, which allows for these different platforms to be linked together. So messages sent between these different platforms can be uh, synced up. Uh, however, uh, th there are some downsides to using Matterbridge. Uh, specifically with Telegram, you have spam bots joining, uh, posting, forwarding, uh, spam, and that will automatically be posted across the different platforms to IRC, Matrix, uh, which be can become very annoying. Uh, and when it comes to the Matrix users, you have the issue of uh, editing uh, posts, which does not necessarily translate uh, very well for the IRC users. Uh, so it helps in terms of uh, allowing information to be shared between these different platforms, but it's not a perfect solution uh, at this point. So when it comes to coordination, there's different software that could be used to make the uh, process of event uh, planning a lot more efficient. Uh, initially, we used Tiga for project management, uh, but many users found the Kanban there too complicated. So we ended up using GitHub for a time. Uh, and for file sharing, we used Distroot and Cryptpad. Uh, but the problem with these uh, services is that with uh, Distroot, files would be deleted after 30 days. And with Cryptpad, if the uh, shared document is not linked correctly, uh, there would be uh, decryption issues if you're sharing it with, with others. Um, so for the time being, we're using Mattermost for managing files. So for the ticket system, we use Pretex. And for the speaker presentations, we use uh, Pretalix. Now, uh, the systems are a bit uh, rough around the edges, but they get the job done. So when it comes to crypto payments, uh, we found BTC Pay Server, the, the easiest plugin to use uh, with Pretex. And if you check out uh, Seth for Privacy's guide on accepting Monero, uh, you will find a very easy to follow tutorial on how to activate Monero payments within BTC Pay server. So for crypto to fiat solutions, uh, we're using BT.com, which is a ATM service provider based in Switzerland. Uh, and we're also using CryptoPay, which is a service provider here in uh, Czechia. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you for taking the time to listen to it. And if you happen to be in Prague uh, for the next few days, uh, you are cordially invited to attend MoneroCon. And if you go to tickets.monerocon.org and enter Web3 Privacy as a promo code, uh, you'll get 20% off. And hopefully I'll get to meet some of you in person and have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.